And then it only seemed fitting to wait until this fall. Mm -hmm. It's kind of the first anniversary of the release of the Story Dwelling album. Yes. The song is Home With You Continues. It's the continues, the continuation of (laughs) the song Home With You that kind of started on the debut album. Oh, nice. So it's new verses on the Story Dwelling album. And uh, if you watch it, you'll see the actual van that we take on the road mm-hmm. and the actual bedspread on our futon from Tanzania that we use. So, so it's a little fun. behind this, a little behind the scenes, just like just a little bit, yeah. yeah. And uh, we recorded it at this great farm in northern Minnesota. And uh, this funny little furry friend, this cat, decided to make these darling oh. little cameos throughout the whole thing. It was wonderful and precious and surprising and like it's on stage this the, the showing up of this little yeah, kitty people are like how did you train the cat and mm-hmm. we're like he just be decided to be our friend yeah. <laughs> and doing this and then we did some taping in minneapolis under the highway and uh, there's some really beautiful scenes there okay so is this your first mm-hmm. is this your first music video it's my first official one yeah uh-huh. how, how did that go we, i've videos. stumbled upon people we were in new york last week and i stumbled upon a rap artist doing a music video with like a little single camera and two people around him you know mm-hmm. and my son's like mm-hmm. oh it must be a low budget kind of thing mm-hmm. we'll walk, well, you know, we watched it for a little bit but um i mean how does definitely that definitely low budget right but, yeah and that, a small that kind team. of thing but yeah. we, we say the first official because it's like professional quality it's professional you know? quality right i mean i'm not saying you can't yeah. do a top quality thing there but right. how does it feel to you when you're like did people see you did they like mm. are you standing there strumming uh, along or singing out loud under the bridge or a, a little bit uh there weren't very many people around when we were doing it under the bridge mm-hmm. so not many people saw us and then at the farm really no one was around uh it was a bed and breakfast and uh just the kind of the owner of the farm yeah. was around so she knew uh, we were there but all right, so I just want to nerd out yeah. for a little bit about how okay, people make great. music videos. Okay. Because <laughs> this, this has always been interesting to me because they're singing, mm-hmm. obviously, but they're mm-hmm. not, the, the, the audio that I'm hearing is right. not, right. is not that. So the audio is definitely what we, what we recorded in the studio for the Story Dwelling album. Is laid over mm-hmm. your mm-hmm. really singing, but right. so we did like functional lip syncing for this A couple hours and several takes of me singing along to the album. So like we actually had like a little CD player with us, <laughs> which uh-huh. sounds like, yeah. like the kind of CD player you could put on your shoulder. Actually, yeah, like a boombox. <laughs> right, like a boombox. Yeah. And I sang along to it and strummed along to it, and then you know John Noltner who did the video. Yeah. He uh, he picked out the best takes that seemed fitting to the story and to the uh, you know that synced up the best with my lips and strumming. And okay, so you're you're mm-hmm. you're standing there and you're playing mm-hmm. along. Are you really singing out loud? Mm-hmm. Do you find you have to oh, really yeah. sing? Like you can't just mouth it because it looks mm-hmm. too right. Yeah, looks too I, mouthy. I sing it along. I sing along with it and I sing with it as best as I can. So uh-huh. as precisely and as accurately to the recording mm-hmm. as as I can. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and how much how much plotted out is that um, as to what you're going to do? Like, is it like okay, here's what I want you to do. I want you to be mm-hmm. singing, and then I don't know. I haven't seen I haven't watched the video close enough for this, but mm-hmm. then you then you like turn around. I want you to do one where now you're going to turn around on this verse and sing it that way. Do they do that, or do you just kind of do mm-hmm. what you want? And uh, I kind of just did what I want. It was a. I mean, we did a, a bunch of takes. So mm-hmm. one of the takes is in the studio where we, where we recorded the album. I get tongue tied on those blue, blue, yeah. where we okay uh and i just was kind of in one position for a while and he switched the camera around yeah and we did a couple different takes where the camera was on different sides and so he would move and occasionally he would be like could you look in this direction or could you smile at the light or smile at jason because he's standing over there because that makes sense because the song's about him and whatever and then when we were at the farm, we did a lot of, I kind of just was walking back and forth. Like we were, we got up at 4 a.m. so that we could get sunrise shots, uh-huh. which was totally worth it. It was gorgeous. And so I did a lot of kind of walking with the guitar, I like see. towards the lake or away from the lake and the little kitty cat would follow me. <laughs> and then, and then we did a little bit more planning of scenes where we were just kind of like, let's just do a little bit of shooting this way uh-huh. but you can see that there's not a whole lot of shooting for a long time in one place yeah. there's a couple t- takes where jason and i are walking holding hands toward the little cabin and then we're walking away from the little cabin <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know so it's and, and were you like were you comfortable with that was that okay did it feel or does it feel when you're doing your first music video does it feel like you're i don't know like 
sure. too much of a spectacle or like you f- feel awkward about well, it all like prom pictures audience in the mm-hmm. process mm-hmm. so it was just kind of a lot of fun really. oh yeah it was really a lot of fun and there was a little bit of self-consciousness i suppose and just kind of getting yeah. the feel for this but but it was just really a lot of fun yeah because it's yeah. it's just part of the struggle of being a being a public a public person right like because when you do public stuff like mm-hmm. you do, um, right. you there's always that like little that performance side to things, right? That little yeah. self, self-conscious performance thing that you're, oh, yeah. that you're in For sure. and that you're doing. You know exactly what you're I do, about. I do. Know, yeah. I, I, I know exactly <laughs> what it's. You see do lots of public people. I do. I, yeah, I, I totally feel that. I especially love the image of the tree growing up under the freeway in between. I wonder how you ever found that oh, this little sapling tree. And especially with the line, mm-hmm. they say, my hands can't touch the sky. Like you could just hear s- all the tree world saying, you can't grow there. Oh, uh-huh. yeah. Well, and you know, uh, that that line is not in the, in the music video exactly because it's a different song, but s- they're on the same album. And the story is all connected oh, no, for sure. Oh, no, that's okay. I'm huh. being confusing because I'm bringing all these different things in <laughs> today. <laughs> I'm like catching up on the it's on the like year. <laughs> There's no problem. Now, uh, the good thing about this video is if someone goes and watches it and then yeah. buys your album, they mm-hmm. contribute a dollar to uh, helping to helping people who need meals in other parts of the country or yes. other parts of the world. Rather. Yes. So digital downloads are available online for pay what you want. Mm-hmm. And then for each dollar a meal is contributed to a hungry child through Feed My Starving Children. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So digital downloads lets let someone decide their own, their, their, the value that they put on the album to buy it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Uh huh. Or what they feel they can contribute. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How does that go? What do, how much do people give? Is, is, is there some average amount that people give? Like, do they give more than you would have charged for? Do they give less? Do you, mm. do you know? It probably ranges between $5 and $15 or so. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. There's 12 tracks on the album. I think people tend to think 99 cents an album, iTunes, 79 cents. Yeah, yeah. I think mm-hmm. people tend to think that way. Mm-hmm. And that's fine. Yeah. Do do you do you ever buy albums like that where you get to decide the amount? Just to put you on the spot? Victoria, yeah, do you? Yeah, it does. It does I've never done that. On the spot. I have done that before, uh, mostly when I have supported friends. Yeah, like 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 and you, you know the person like, you're in on it with them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's like I'm, a fundraiser. Mhm. And I'm sort of like in those moments I I, I do everything that I can to to pay what I really think the album is worth because I know that it takes a lot of time and energy and resources to create something like that. Yeah, it does. Yeah. And uh, and if I think that I can't pay for something at the time or I don't want to, then I I probably just stream it. Usually, I have kind of a conscience about about these things. About digital downloading. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, because I know I feel how about much libraries. it costs. I know. You know. Uh And, uh, and it does take up a lot of room. So unless I really want it on my phone to like listen to (laughs) when I'm running, like, (laughs) (laughs) so you you have two calculations when when you you get music. (laughs) One is, is it worth the digital space that it takes up on my, on my portable hard drive? That's awesome. (laughs) (laughs) Like some albums, they're worth $15 and space on my, on my iPod. Some music's not even worth the space on my iPod. (laughs) Oh, or that's it hilarious. Just, it might be inspi- inspiring for a while, and then, you know, yeah, we'll see. Yeah, sure. Maybe mm-hmm. I will want to buy it after mm-hmm. a while, mm-hmm. but maybe I won't. <laughs> maybe mm-hmm. I'll be listening to another artist. And, and you, you, you perform live. That's a big thing that you do, right? It you, is, you, yeah. You travel about, and you, mm-hmm. and you, and you do music, and you, and you, you play music for religious yeah. events and non-religious events. and Absolutely. Mm-hmm. anti-religious events you ever do any anti-religious events any, no no i'm not fun, really they never have music at those things well maybe they do <laughs> it might be like hardcore or something yeah. i have no idea i've never been to one yeah so like what do the atheists do for their things we should want i, mean, I need to have the atheists on i need to have the atheists on again a, um, like do they have songs that they sing because there's plenty so, of good things like like frankly there's songs that right i like songs that you've sung yep. that don't necessarily have a yeah. One one wouldn't need to feel comfortable believing in a in an external deity right. to, to 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 listen and to enjoy listen, and sing along, and, and to do that meaningful. stuff. Yeah, yeah, so absolutely. Maybe they sing like Michael Rose, the Boat Ashore, or something. I'm going to ask them about that if they, <laughs> like at, at, at atheist meetings, like do they 
do they do do they do sing alongs? So Steve Why Martin, know that? right? Isn't that the comedian and he uh-huh. also plays the banjo, like a mm-hmm. killer banjo, right? Mm-hmm. He does a hymn. He has a, an atheist hymn that he wrote. Oh. And he performs it, I think, on um what is it? Austin City Limits, maybe? Like yeah. you could I think you could find it online on PBS.org. Is is mm-hmm. Steve Martin an atheist? I'm not sure, but that That would song even be better if he wasn't. So. Yeah, that he yeah. But it, it's a great song. It's really yeah. funny. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. You know, like he's sure. poking, like like he. Okay, I'm gonna, we'll we'll, we'll, we'll dig yeah, it up and no we'll worries. make it. Uh, yeah, we should. We'll make it our it's thing. It's fun. We'll, mm-hmm. we'll make it our thing around here. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. So what else do you have going on? You're, uh, you know, mm-hmm. you're 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 out singing music live for people. You're you're helping put packages of gloves mm-hmm. and goodness together. You're you're yeah. giving money to starving children in um, uh, around the world. You're um, making yeah. music videos. Lots of good intentions. What do you do in your free time? In my free time. Well, I do yoga. I was kind of kidding. Yes. Just recently, I started uh-huh. doing yoga at the Yoga Sanctuary. Yes. In Minneapolis. Uh-huh. And it's marvelous. Mm-hmm. People should come over, shouldn't they? I think so. This segment brought to you by the Yoga Sanctuary. Yeah. Yoga Sanctuary <laughs> MPLS.com. Yeah, good times. And Victoria and I do that together. It there. should, yes. So it's mm-hmm. very good. I was just sort of kidding because that sounds like a lot of things to be doing, you know, that you... Oh, yeah. I mean, I consider a lot of this is really my bliss and it's what I want to be doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I am definitely an introvert, so I need a lot of time to myself. Oh. So I get I get sort of uh, stressed out when, you know, people want to do lots of social things. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Just a little inside. Yeah. Um, stresses me out a little bit. So I need lots of time to just kind of zone out or play my keyboard or whatever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. You can do another song. Can, can you do another song for us? I can. I have this piece of poetry I think I'd oh. like to share with you, though, if that's okay. That would be awesome. And this is the, the piece that you mentioned that someday could could birth into a yeah. song. Yeah, it's just not, it doesn't seem ready to be sung quite yet, though. It's really strange. Hmm. But I feel well, like Why don't you leave it with me? I'll see what I can do with it. I feel, okay. <laughs> see if I can put a little Good something deal. together. <laughs> Good deal. You might be inspired by a little Steve Martin banjo playing. Uh, you never know. Or whatever. You, you never know. I feel like this is relevant to what's happening lately politically. Oh, and boy. I know, right? And I, you mean and like I, two people are running to be president and only one apparently wants the job? I don't, I don't Our know. Current man. president's driving me crazy. Okay. <laughs> Doesn't cool. seem like he wants the job. <laughs> All right. You ask for it. Just you know, act like it's a act like you act like you want it. Well, what I've been thinking about a lot is that I feel like just people freak out a lot, no matter who you are or yep. kind of what side you seem to resonate with, mm-hmm. or if you don't resonate with a quote side or whatever. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I get most riled up and frustrated when people are using all kinds of fear rhetoric. Uh-huh. And there's so many different things to pay attention to and be aware of and respond to. And I really believe in like active citizenship and mm-hmm. voting and all of that. Mm-hmm. And at the same time, I have these thoughts. So here's, here it is. My hope is not in government, not the Pope, or the president, not a party or a candidate, my hope. My hope's not in prosperity, not in national security, not even moral purity, my hope. My hope is not in violence, not in guns or any weapon, not in vehemence or in revenge, my hope. My hope, my hope's not in possessions, not a job or a profession, not the state of corporations, my hope. My hope's not in religions, not in cults or their confessions, not in prophets, so-called heaven sent, my hope. Because my hope is in the most gracious one, the same source of life for all under the sun. My hope lives strong in the freedom of love, Love that's moving and changing and healing and has only just begun. This is my hope. Hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. I like it. Thanks. You're sitting so. with a with a, a person with a master's degree in poetry next to you. Oh, no <laughs> Victoria. way. Are you kidding me? Yeah, that's she's a incredible. she's a professional poet. <laughs> wow. And uh, and I has a, and has a prestigious degree. So I want to ask the two wow. of you, because I'm not a poet. I'm um, so impressed. And you wouldn't even know it, but my feet sure do show no. up. They're long fellows. Um, that I was just in theology, but hardly talk about it. You have a degree in theology? I do, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. That's hilarious. <laughs> um, 
the 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 process of making of making poetry. Yeah. I'm 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 interested in in that for those of us listeners who don't um, know how how that happens, where it seems like mm-hmm. this this you know mm-hmm. magical thing that, that that you do that other people don't have access to. Like mm-hmm. how how does that mm-hmm. how does that happen? Wow, I don't know if it's a whole lot different from how you put together words for your writing. You know, I don't know if it's a whole lot different. I tend to gravitate and in my mind word just different words kind of come together they sort of I don't know magnetize towards each other in Uh, my mind uh and then I I put them on paper and sometimes I just brainstorm a bunch of words that are kind of related to what I'm thinking about and reflecting Mm -hmm. on and then I kind of go then I kind of piece them together so it's you know, it ends up being sort of a, a litany that seems sort of uniform and step by step, but it ends, it really begins more as like a cloud and mm-hmm. kind mm-hmm. of different colors and things. And then I put them in different places oh, to, yeah. before I share them with people. Yeah, interesting. Now, that's nothing Thanks. at all like how I write no? things. No, I mean, yeah, it's much better. It's a much better process. <laughs> There's no colors involved. There's no. <laughs> There's no magnetism. There must be clouds. There's there must be clouds no when you're clouds. Right. There's none of that stuff. Thought clouds, though. Like if you There's think no of thought, thought bubbles. Clouds. Thought bubbles. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. I. 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 I don't know. So. So, uh, Victoria, how about you? When. When. When you write poetry, how, does it. Does it happen to you in a similar way? That. That. There's, there's sort of this. This constellation of. Of elements, and they're, coming together in a. In a pattern depends uh-huh. so I, I have a manuscript right now that's fairly complete and when I was writing those I had a particular process they were what uh, I called walking uh-huh. poems so mm-hmm. I was taking a walk that I used to take with someone I loved very much who died the same walk and taking copious notes mm. during the whole walk um, that I used to take with her and I'd, so I'd have these pages and pages and pages and pages of images Mm. And and then I would take them and construct them into poems, and they were called letters to Minnehaha Creek. And then and then themes would emerge, maybe or connections or links mm. to images. And so it was a lot of sifting out that process. Oh yeah. But then now I'm working on a project where one of the things I'm working on, I'm working on stories of women from the Bible and kind of filling in some of the spaces. And in that I find, like I take a lot of notes about the Bible story and then they kind of sit there and then I think about them and then things happen to me, certain emotions or whatever. Like I was just thinking about Mm. how it could have some of my devastation about not being able to run the marathon on Sunday. How, what kind of devastation might the character Deborah have had in her life? Mm. And could I use some, like could I mine or process or uh, harvest some of that emotion I, this mm. just occurred to me today mm-hmm. while I was driving on here. I thought, oh, I better work on that because that motion is really fresh and mm. raw right now. So feeling that emotion feels like you have access to the, the words that would, would yeah. convey that emotion. Later. And there might be something huh. in her story. Uh-huh. I'm not sure right now. So I have like this narrative kind of running this Deborah narrative. And then I'm wondering where I can fill in some of the emotions Mm -hmm. so it's a very different kind of process than the other and then sometimes I'm just warming up like I've exercise I'm sure you have music things you just do for fun like sometimes I read the news and write a sonnet just to like warm up it's gonna be terrible but I'm just Mm -hmm. getting going working on your chops just sort of yeah it's like running hills or training any kind of training Mm. and then I'm more likely to get maybe some kind of gift poem that didn't feel like I worked for it at all if I'm doing a lot of those other oh, kinds of things, so it cool. it just depends. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's cool. Now, now both of we you are are like are external poets, meaning you know, I don't know what that means, but I, what I mean by that is <laughs> that you write poetry for other people mm. as well, mm-hmm. as opposed to just I don't know, you know, like mm-hmm. internal poetry or something, mm-hmm. um, or you know, mm-hmm. like in a diary or something. Mm-hmm. Um, does that does that frame you a lot? Do you end up Heather Lynn, do you end up thinking about like, mm-hmm. I want to say something to those people. So some of this is my experience, but I'm also now feeling like I'm speaking for mm-hmm. or on behalf of or to mm-hmm. these other people. 
Is that is that a part of the is that a part of the dynamic? Because for me as a writer or as a speaker or as a radio person, it's always external, mm -hmm. right? Like mm -hmm. everything I write mm -hmm. is so that someone else will read it. Mm -hmm. Like I don't I don't do any internal work that involves writing. Sure. Um, so it's always with an audience in mind. Uh -huh. So there's always this like communicative exchange that that I'm thinking mm -hmm. of. But I wonder with, with more yep. artsy, poetic aspirations and inspirations, is that the same way? I have to do some spill writing in my life. So every morning, mm. if, you've, if you've read The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron, mm -hmm. she talks about the morning pages. Mm -hmm. And so that's at least three long handwritten pages of just spilling kind of stream of consciousness and i kind of have to do some of that on some level really uh That's, yeah this is what i wanted to get at it's a you. it's a great because i know to you guys that seems like normal behavior <laughs> but i'm telling you if anybody else listening they're like what like oh yeah just your well, you know you get up in the morning and you just let it all out <laughs> what who do no. I, um, Who does that? I make coffee in my French press every morning, and my cat's always like following me around because she likes to sit at my desk with me mm -hmm. when I write. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, I pull out my notebook and my pen every morning, and I write at least three pages. Really? Okay. Mm -hmm. And this does that ever, does that stuff ever been showing up then later? Uh, do you do you go back and look at that and think it, there was a phrase I mean, there that I borrowed? K kind of, it has uh -huh. in small ways before, but a lot of it's just just really hmm. meh yeah like it's just it's so is this is this a practice it's more that clearing the static it's more like getting the cob clearing the cobwebs it's more of a practice and sort of going no one's listening right now i can say whatever mm. i want kind of thing uh it's ignoring any sort of editor inside or mm -hmm. critic hmm. Mm -hmm. Is, is this a practice that you we're just doing naturally, or did you learn about it from reading a I learned book about like it from reading yeah. The Artist's Way, yeah. mm -hmm. and then just started doing it. Okay. And and I've done it almost every day for a few years. Well, how about that? Yeah. yeah. Not, I mean, I've totally missed days, and then sure. some days yeah, I have whatever. to get up at like yeah. four, and I, you know, maybe squeeze in a half page or something, yeah. and I'm like, yeah. yeah, I have to go. Yeah, but but it's <laughs> but it's normal for you to do that, to do mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if I haven't, in a couple of days, I hunger for it. I oh. need to yeah. do it. Mm -hmm. And then later in the day when you're writing a song or something, is there a lot of external, do you have a big external um, grid that it's going through? Like, how is this going to sound? Or yeah, sometimes. Who am I thinking yeah. about? Sometimes there is that. And sometimes I have to do everything that I can to get rid of it first mm -hmm. so that I can get out. What do I think first? What is my voice? And what mm. do I want to say? And then I can let it put a sifter through it like you know after I've gotten through the initial layers of what mm -hmm. I want to say and what my thoughts are then what thoughts do I want to share and then how do I want to share them because I know that different words trigger different things for different people in different contexts and different groups and you can't like please everyone sure. or reach yeah. everyone but I'm really mindful of those things and mm -hmm. and filter through some of that hmm. mm -hmm. Victoria do you find that a similar is, is a similar process for you do, do you have one of these morning clearings I have in the past, I've been religious about morning pages. I find that a morning run will sometimes help take care of some of that. Um, or if I'm really intentional and take like a walking meditation or something like that, that it might. I, I'm not as religious about, but I do. I do have to sometimes. Like it's just like there's too much. Like she said, the word static is really like there's just it's just in the way. All this kind of thinking, busyness, or. Uh, uh, angst whatever you want to call it and you kind of got to clear it out before yeah. you can move forward into mm -hmm. some other kinds of thinking or and and what about the, the thinking of poetry as a communicative act to a an audience of some variety yeah, it's Does that show i was in just head? thinking about when you said you just go on a run for the run's sake mm -hmm. i've always written poetry for its own sake uh, for its own sake yeah uh, it's only been in the last year maybe two years that i've been more thoughtful about the possibility of uh, um sharing that maybe other people m might appreciate it i, I actually have, uh, to be honest i felt like maybe i'm hoarding a little bit like i oh. just only care about poetry for writing poetry like, i don't really care about it for any other it matters a great deal to me i want to be write the best possible poetry i can just because i want it to be like, I have no other reason for doing it. Mm. And so it's been interesting then to decide 
to share it and then have to think about that. Like, is this going to matter to anybody else? Mm-hmm. Who would it matter to? Mm-hmm. Why would it matter to them? And then just recently having been asked to write something for an event, mm-hmm. our friend Br- Brian Mayfield just had a P- Project 515 event. And months before, he asked me to write for that. That was horrible for me. I had a horrible experience trying to write for that event. Mm-hmm. All kinds of insecurities and doubts and frustrations. And then I was injured and mm-hmm. dealing with all of that. And so writing for an event, I have to say, was probably one of the most terrible oh. experiences I've had as a writer. And I I don't really know what to do about that. I, I cranked something out. I had something I felt okay with. I, re- I read at the em- event, and it, yeah. it, it, I think it, it was great. mattered, but it was really, really uncomfortable for me. And mm. I, don't, I don't really know if I'm going to be quick to do that again mm-hmm. like to agree to something where i don't have the work yet yeah i did i i found it to be really challenging i have to i have to process it some more so oh. i don't know what to say yeah heather lynn can you take us out with a little number mm-hmm. 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 is this uh what 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 are we going to hear here well i've never played home with you continues on my ukulele before i thought i might just do that as we excellent this is the one from the music video yeah so when people adore it then they should go um then they should go uh watch the uh, live music video so here's heather lynn she'll take us out of the show today thanks for listening we'll be back next week um most likely um broadcasting from somewhere in the hill country in texas maybe abilene texas or somewhere around there yeah truly um so uh so, so thanks for listening here's heather lynn on Doug Page radio If we lived in a northern woods cabin All summer long on our table Fresh cut lavender lupins Sing along with Robin's song From birch and poplar limbs Hike the trails, canoe the lakes We live life strong and fit Furnishing our lives with love and laughter so size and styles it don't really matter i'd be at home with you baby yeah i'd be at home with you my love all i need to make this house a home is for us to be together my home is with you wherever we are Wherever we are Mm -hmm. And if we lived in a tent city on Seattle streets Ignoring insults, stares, and glares, and how pedestrians retreat. They don't know we both work jobs and still can't afford a roof. Beneath the tarps and open air, our love is weatherproof. Furnishing our lives with love and laughter. So size and styles, they don't really matter I'd be at home with you, baby, yeah I'd be at home with you, my love All I need to make this house a home is for us to be together My home is with you wherever we are Wherever we are. Mm -hmm. Right on.